can literally just say this for the next 10 to 12 minutes. And any of you that watch today's Texans-Bears game would know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Bears football! In a matchup of peak Bears football. Like, it's an interesting strategy, isn't it? Don't you find it just be a bit so? That of all the people that you want to try and employ Bears football strategies against, it's freaking Lovey Smith, one of the few guys in Bears history that actually employed Bears football to some level of damn success. I'm just saying. It's a curious strategy. But oh my god. My dude Chad Rusick. Rusich, however the fuck you say your name, I don't care. It's not important enough to know. At Baradon are you on Twitter? You should follow him. Because he sent me something that perfectly encapsulates the feeling for this game. And that is he sent me a gif a gif, excuse me, it's not a gif, it's a gif. Of Lieutenant Dan in Forrest Gump at the New Year's party. And he's sitting there with all disheveled and in his wheelchair with a frowny face as the confetti's falling down. And I'm like, that's exactly what the F today's game feels like. Because on the one hand, for a team that was protected by a lot of national morons to only win three or four games, here are the Bears three games into the 2022 season. And they're sitting at two and one. If I'd have told you at the beginning of the season that the Bears would be sitting at 2-1, and one, if you only cared about the record, if you only cared about them winning meaningless football games, you would look at that and say, by God, yes, I will take it. And in fact, most, if not all teams in the NFL, if you told them after three games that they would have a 2-1 and one record, they'd probably take it. And certainly this Bears team would. Which, of course, is part of the problem. Because... It's not like they're winning because of spectacular offensive modern football. They're winning with good old tried and true Bears football. Like even early on in today's game, when David Montgomery goes down with that really gnarly looking knee injury, and I hope he'll be all right. In comes Khalil Herbert, and you're like, holy shit, yeah. This is why it's not such an urgent priority to give Monty big money in the offseason, because Herbert probably could do the job, if not better, and certainly seems like he's got more burst and is a better fit for this offense. Because he ran all over Lovey Smith's run defense. He had a monster day. What was it, like 150 yards rushing? Two touchdowns? Like Khalil Herbert was massive today. And the Bears' defense, yeah, the Texans were able to move the ball on him at times, it seemed like at will, but they came up with some big plays. Um, made some big stops. And at the end of it, there's Davis Mills. So I don't know what the hell he was looking at. Oh, Roquan Smith decided he wanted to play like a guy who was playing for a big contract. Had like 16 tackles today, a couple tackles for loss, and the big game-changing interception when the game was tied late. Bears end up kicking the frickin' field goal to win it, 23-20. to Dare I say... Perfect peak epitome of Bears football. So, if you get excited about these types of things, you will sit there and say to yourself, well, the Bears won today. They could have easily lost this game. They got substandard play from their quarterback. Their defense was less than stellar. But they did what good teams do, and they found a way to win. Yeah, about that. If you're thinking about this season and thinking about wins and losses, you're not thinking about it right. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. We've seen Bears football time after time after time after time, game after game after game, season after season after season. And the last time the Bears won the Super Bowl, I was freaking four years old. That shit don't work anymore. Only a lame-ass dumbass would be sitting there and getting their jollies off to this team being 2-1 in the fashion that they have been. 
The number one goal of the program, the number one goal of the program this year was to have Justin Fields play all 17 games and see whether he can be the guy or not and pray to God that he can be. That's it. Everything else is secondary. Because if Justin Fields showed you enough that you believe that he could finally be the answer at the quarterback position, the trajectory of the Bears organization goes like that almost overnight. But if he looks more of the same, if he looks like a Trubisky, or God dare I say a Grossman or a Cade McNow, like the Bears are in start over mode. Now, of course, it doesn't help when you have a general manager who clearly decides he wants to put around your young quarterback the scrubbiest ass office that he possibly can. It doesn't help that when other teams are seeing the trend in the league of hiring offensive minded head coaches that you go on the defensive side like typical Bears football dumb dickism. But you look at this season through three games. You look at this game today. And Justin Fields doesn't even look like a high-level Division I starting quarterback. Let alone an NFL starting quarterback. Let alone a guy who could be a high-level starting quarterback. There is no way you could watch this game today and feel any type of confidence in him whatsoever. It's time to worry, Bears fans. It's not time to panic. It's not time to totally and completely give up on them. It's not time to go ahead and just call them busted fields. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're not there yet. But through three games, Justin Fields has 45 pass attempts. That's not going to develop any damn body. And in fact, all it's going to do is exactly what the fuck it's doing. It erodes any confidence that Justin Fields has because he feels like he has so few opportunities to make a play in the passing game that he feels like he has to be perfect, therefore he overthinks it, therefore it's paralysis by analysis. You saw it a few times in today's game. He's sitting there in the pocket, he's got a ton of time, nobody's getting open, or even if they are, either way, Justin Fields isn't pulling the trigger, he's too late to fucking take action. Because he feels like he has to be perfect. Because he's saying the few times I get a chance to fucking throw the ball, if I screw this up, they're going to take the ball out of my hands, which is not how you develop a young quarterback, Luke Getze, you dumbass. I want to give you a statistical comparison here. I tweeted this a little bit after the game. I got to read it here because I don't have it all memorized, but nonetheless, through three games of their second season, Mitchell Trubisky, bust. We all know that. If you have a brain, you know that. Through three games in the 2018 season, his first three games out of the second season, 72 of 104 for 591 yards passing, two passing touchdowns, three INTs. Now those numbers are far from spectacular. Far from spectacular. But let's look at Justin Fields' first three games of his second season here in 2022, including today's whopper of eight for 17 for 100 and what was it, six yards and two interceptions through three games, through three games in a season that should have been 4,000 yards passing or bust for Justin Fields, fucking 2,000 passing yards feels like a goddamn stretch goal. He's 23 of 45 for 297 yards passing, two touchdowns and four interceptions. You goddamn right it's time for Bears fans to worry. 17 pass attempts. 297 yards passing through three games. That's less than 100 passing yards per game. That's exactly 99 yards passing per game. That means that he is on pace. Think about this. He is on pace for about 1,683 passing yards for a 17 game season. When he does get opportunities to throw, he's largely not been good. Frankly, he sucked. The play calling around him has sucked. They still can't figure out ways to manufacture touches for guys like Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. Oh my God, there were a couple of Cole Komet sightings today. How nice is that? 
Well, we'd rather run the goddamn football because we want to think small beef potatoes, fucking Bears football, mediocrity of the McCaskey way mindset, instead of thinking bigger picture in about the next 5, 10, 15 years of this goddamn organization. Justin Fields clearly doesn't have confidence in what he's doing, and clearly the coaching staff, the offensive staff, doesn't have any confidence in him either. And all they're doing by that lack of confidence in him is making him feel less confident. Anybody that suggests right now that Justin Fields should be benched is a fucking idiot that you should never listen to about anything relating to football ever again. So in the 1960s or the 1970s, you don't do that. You especially don't do that with a quarterback that already has shaky confidence. You're going to destroy him. You potentially create a schism in the locker room because what happens if all of a sudden you go out there and Trevor Simeon just looks even mediocre or average? He's going to look leaps and bounds better than Justin Fields right fucking now. Now you've created a goddamn quarterback controversy. That's stupid. Why would you create self-inflicted wounds like that? Now you've got to ride it out with Justin Fields. You've actually got to figure out ways to put the ball in his hands more. I know that's going to sound counterintuitive to a lot of you, but if you're only giving me 17-ish pass attempts a game, I'm going to feel a tremendous amount of pressure that every time I step back to throw, I've got to be perfect, which is causing the problems in his game because he's not reacting to what he's fucking seeing. He's not seeing the field well. He's not reacting to it well. He's not processing it well. He's not making timely decisions, let alone good ones. I mean, what else can you say? The best way to overcome that is to give him more opportunities. It reduces the pressure. And having competent offensive coaching around him, which the Bears right now through three games clearly do not from a passing game standpoint, running game, different story. But who gives a shit about that? It's 2022. It's time to throw. Period. Like, it is time to worry. Oh, and by the way, that Mitchell Trubisky stat I threw out there for the first three starts of his second season, you know what's notable about that? Is that fourth game, he was 19 of 26 for 354 yards passing and six touchdowns! That was a six-touchdown game against the Bucks. Like, think about that. Right now, you're just wanting Justin Fields to break 150 yards passing! If Justin Fields ends up being a bust, it is a perfect example of how to not handle a young quarterback by an organization on every level. Now, Justin Fields is absolutely culpable. He, he sucked today. He has largely sucked so far this season. Like, if you really think about it, the 12 quarters you've watched him, how many quarters could you actually point to and say he played decent ball? Two? Maybe three? So, decent ball 25% of the time or less? Fuck yeah, you should be worried. You should be really worried. The Bears have got 14 games to figure out how to make Justin Fields better. And it needs to happen. You want to celebrate this team being 2-on-1? Fine, go ahead. Be somebody that can't see the bigger picture. I refuse to. If they lost today... But Justin Fields went out there and was like 30 of 45 for 280 or 300 yards, a couple touchdowns, maybe one pick, two picks. I'd be like, you know what? I actually feel encouraged. That's what I want to see. Wins and losses are secondary this year. They are a bonus, but they do not come at the expense of the bigger picture, which is Justin Fields. Instead, the Bears win in large part because Davis Mills is mid in goddamn self. Yet look at how much better Davis Mills looked today. How sad is that? Because he coughed it up late by throwing that boner pick to Roquan Smith deep in his own territory, the Bears are sitting there at 2-1. and one. No, I'm not going to fucking celebrate. This is fucking traumatic. Reminds me of watching the Bears all these damn years. Why the hell am I going to sit there and celebrate Bears football? Time to worry, Bears fans. It ain't over yet. But... If Justin Fields shows this year he's not the dude, I don't care what this team's record is. Like, they're not going to do anything. And then you feel like you're back to square one all over again. Oh, and by the way, you'll probably win just enough games to where you'll be picking like in the middle of round one, so that'll make it even worse. Like, yeah, this unfortunately feels very familiar.
to Bears fans.